Hey, and welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to look at adding a custom sky to our renderings out of Twinmotion. And there's a number of ways that we can do that, but we're gonna, it's a bit of a workaround because unfortunately, we can't just dump in a new sky. We, it's not so easy. I've made a previous video on 360 skies and literally updating the sky in your Twinmotion like live while you're wandering around doing whatever you need to. But, and of course that would apply to any rendering, but this is more of a post process. So it's something we're gonna end up adding in Photoshop. So before we get into it, if you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. That really helps me out a lot and it tells me that you might've learned something. So get into it now. We are looking to change out the sky. We're, you know, this sky's fine. It, it does what it does. It's a basic sky. We have clouds, we can do whatever we want, cool. But maybe we have a, a custom sky, something we wanna add ourselves like after a rendering. That seems to make sense. And so what are we going to have to do here? Well, <laughs> there's a bit of a workaround because unfortunately within Twinmotion, we don't have the option of including an alpha channel on a rendering export, which means an alpha channel being like a background that is hidden or a, a sky in this case that is a, a single color that shows up that we can easily just select in Photoshop and trade out for a real sky. So we're essentially going to have to make that ourselves. And what we're going to have to do is basically make our own green screen, a uh, green screen background that we can use and replace in Photoshop. But on top of that, we have to, in a sense, export the rendering, the same rendering twice. And I'll show you how that is. So first, let's go and make our green screen background, which is very simple, fortunately. So we'll come over here and I want to simply add an object. I want to make sure that's a primitive object and you'll see why here in a second but I'll go to objects primitives and then scroll down and then here's a sphere it's like a cut sphere it's in half so like here we go let's I want to place it somewhere in the middle of my scene but doesn't matter not really for what we're doing doesn't matter so there we go yeah we're, we're almost there so now we need to add a material and this material is going to serve as our green screen uh, you know green so let's go ahead and select this material and it's fine. I just want to change the color. And because I am so particular, um, you might use other words to describe me. I have the hex code for a traditional green screen over here. And there it is. I'll hit OK. And lo and behold, there it is. So at this point, I want to then blow it up. I, I literally want this to be like the background of our view, like everywhere, all the way around. Uh, <laughs> and I think this was done in a a twin motion tutorial that like twin motion actually put out and it was not used for this purpose necessarily, but it was to trade out skies within twin motion, something similar to what we did in a previous video. So at this point I'll hit tab I'll select it and I'll hit tab until I have the scale here. And let's just scale this to, you know, 10. And actually I'll go ahead and undo that. And I want to make the, you know, 20 something, something huge. And so you'll see that like, <laughs> It's literally blocking the sun, not the actual sun because we can still see it, but like all the sun and shade. If I, you know, you can see like the extents of it almost. And that's fine. You know, like we're, that's what we're after. And you'll also notice now at this point, my sky is still there. It's not what we want. We're losing some shadow, but ultimately this is not what we want. And there's one last step that we need to do. So what I'm going to do now, and this will tell you if it's big enough, I'm going to make sure I still have my sphere selected, which I do here. I'll hit F, which means I will zoom to that, uh, basically to where it's that object I've selected and pressed F, it will zoom that object on my camera so I can see it all. So cool. Obviously, my entire scene is within the sphere, but I probably want to go at this point and you know double this again. So that's fine again. And again, once I move in here, we can see, you know, I'm in the sphere, but nothing shows up as green yet. And there's one last step. And finally, this step is here. I want to make sure that I do click F, come out here. I want to select the material again. And one last thing we'll have to do is come over to settings and then make sure this is two sided. And I click on and to get back inside, let's say you make the sphere giant. You can click anything, absolutely anything that is in your scene. And again, it's selecting multiple rails at this point, but I can click F and I can just zoom right in. And so you'll notice now, look at this. This is beautiful. I can see, <laughs> my green screen or my green background okay but you'll also probably if you have any flat area which i do obviously you can see i'm clipping the top of my scene so what we want to do 
is I'm going to click F again on my sphere with it selected. And I want to actually move this down. And you can move this down just like nothing, like 0001, like something. And that should be enough to where if I come in here, I can see, yeah, I still have a little more clipping. So I need to lower it just a bit. And honestly, you can lower it almost as much as you want because we want to just, we want to maintain the dome. So minus 001 ought to be enough now. I can click F and then there we go. No clipping. Perfect. And so it, obviously you can see it looks very flat, very boring, obviously because it's blocking the sun, one, but two, it's, it's literally green. <laughs> so I went ahead and made an image view here. And we can we can start to see, you know, like I do have sun in this, like there's still some sun there, but I want to make particularly two renderings. And these two renderings, I mean, I use the same camera, so I'll let, literally let's frame this as if we are going to frame my shot. I want to make sure I'm on the ground. I'm on the ground here. And we just want to get the angle of our shot, what it might look like, what we're happy with. And sure, that's good. That looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. And when I refresh it, I get the green back background and everything. Cool. So like this is good. So what I want to do now is make sure we have the two renderings. And those two renderings, one of them will be the green background. Okay. And the other one will be with the sphere or green background off because we want to see all the shadows. Like I don't see the shadows here. I'll go ahead and expand this and we can see as I turn the sphere off, we get all these nice looking shadows. Like this is what we want to see, but we want to see this with a background that we're happy with. Awesome. Okay. So let's do the first rendering. So the first rendering is here and we'll go into more. And this is where I want to like, I want to balance the lighting out. Basically want the lighting in the foreground to be flat. And there's a couple of ways we can do this. I want to make sure that auto exposure is off which you'll see it's really bright, but I want to come back into the lighting once again and go to settings. And I want to change my sun intensity down maybe five th to 5,000. That's a little too dark. So maybe 10,000, maybe even 15,000. This, this will change whenever we end up hiding the sphere because it's going to just let more light in basically. And so we just want to get a nice flat looking image. Now, the thing to be aware of is we really don't care about what the building looks like here because it's going to be it's going to be taken from the better looking rendering. So I just want a nice flat look. And I'm more so looking from a flat look in the sky. So a couple of things that we need to do to achieve that. We can go to weather. I'm going to make sure there are no clouds. So completely sunny. There's really nothing else here that I need to worry about from that standpoint. Lighting. Now we got to make sure that we're dealing with, you know, we can see some streaks in here. And, you know, the, again, this may not be perfect just because there's literally sun on the other side of the sphere shining onto the sphere. There's not a whole lot we can do with that, about that. But what I can do is attempt to look at this material. And I'm going to go ahead and quit this media mode and I will go to my sphere here. We can start to look at the material in hopes that we can reduce some of the reflections so like that's a great thing to start with reduce some reflection down to zero make sure there's no glow nothing like that and maybe that's all we need that might have been all that we needed to do so at this point what i can do is again go back into my view doesn't necessarily matter where and you'll notice it i'm still seeing some of the streaks and you know there's just not a good way around that because it just kind of is what it is and it really is just the it's just the sphere and you'll notice it in particular it's the sun creating a shadow so there's a couple things we can do here we can actually play with the location of the sun and that's what we're going to have to do if we want to achieve a look that is really perfect and by perfect i mean just flat enough in the background so we can dump and select so we can only select this and then end up dumping a new sky onto it okay so again now we're gonna go to more location i just want to change the time of day and you can see as i change the time of day that's going to slightly change and really look at that i'm i'm almost like straight up 12 i'm at more like 145 and we have very minimal very minimal uh, gradient that we're seeing in the green so it's pretty flat looking so i'm i'm happy with this i cannot say it's going to be absolutely perfect but i am pretty happy with it. so i'm going to refresh this recapture this and now i'm going to render this and once we render this I'm going to do the exact same thing with all with, by changing the settings and making it look how I want, minus that sphere, of course. Okay, so let's render this out. So here we go. Like, here's our image. Not bad. Like, I'm pretty happy with the amount of green that we're seeing here. 
Now, I will, I will say that we're going to have some, we might have some issues with the water, just the way it is. You know, we can deal with that in Photoshop, not a big deal at this point. So, okay, we have this. Now, let's make our actual nice rendering that we're used to seeing in Twin Motion that we want to see, and then go into Photoshop and we'll end up changing this sky out. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and actually just duplicate this and end up making another one. And so, all I want, really, all I want to do to start with is make sure I selected the new image, but then unhide my sphere. Okay, beautiful. I'm going to refresh this now. And we can see, you know, I, I'm a little, it's a little blown out now because of my settings. I do, you know, I, I might want to change the time of day, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with this time of day. I'll make it little, just a little later so we get some extra shadows and detail there. There we go. And lighting, of course, this is where the, the bulk of it's going to have to happen. The settings here, my intensity is a bit too high now. So maybe 10,000 is enough. Uh, maybe even 8,000. You know, looking good, looking very good. You know, I, for what this is, I'm pretty happy with it. You know, I am going to go ahead and introduce some clouds just because I want that to reflect on the landscape. But remember, we're going to replace the sky. That's kind of the whole point here. So weather, just throw in some clouds here. Cool. You know, I'm really pretty happy with this. It looks good. So at this point, if we are happy with it, we'll go ahead and recapture this again just to make sure we're saving this point. And again, I'll go ahead and export this. And I will see you in Photoshop in just a second once this is complete. Okay, we're here in Photoshop, and I'm just going to open both of these. And we're going to get a, we're going to get to work with them. Okay, so we can see I've got boom one, boom two, and you can see what we're going to ultimately end up with. The idea is that we can take, you know, take the green out of this image and replace it with a completely separate background, a completely separate sky. And we could even go as far as to, you know, cut, cut around the mountains, things like that, but I just want to first literally select the green. And I want to make sure my tolerance, I, I went ahead and gone to the magic wand and I want to make sure my tolerance is pretty low. So I'll probably put it below 10 because I want to see if I can not select some of the water. You know, if I can keep that great. So I select this and obviously you can see I need a bit more tolerance. So let's go ahead and put that at eight because I was currently at six. Look at that, eight. That's pretty great. And so what we're going to do at this point is you'll notice, of course, behind all of these different points here behind, like through the windows, through the window, th through the trees, it's still picking up the green. Of course, we have it in the background. Now, what I want to do with uh, with my selection still there and selected, I can right click and choose similar. So I'm basically going to choose similar. And you'll notice like immediately I have selected essentially everything I care about and everything I care about except some points in here, which we can kind of deal with as we need to. But at this point, I want to go ahead and make a mask. So come down here at the bottom, and I can see Add Layer Mask. And as soon as I do that, of course, I need to invert the mask. So let's undo that. I will hold Control, Shift, and then hit I, and this will invert my entire selection on my, on my Photoshop image here. So now we'll go to Mask here, and I can see I have a mask. I have, I have a mask, which is literally all the green that we just took out. And then I have my regular, what's left, basically. I can kill, or I can cancel or hide my mask if I hold shift and then left click on my mask. And I can see where it came from. So this is nice. We have all the water out. Uh, but we, we need to work with some of the background here and then some of the background through the window. So maybe I'll just undo all of this and see what we, if we get, if we go ahead and put a tolerance at, 10 maybe maybe we'll get lucky so i hit 10 there and if i hit similar we can see we do get a little more i might you i might just keep taking this up and so i'd suggest that you do the same because it's all about when you select similar if we can actually end up getting more in there now i'm not going to say this is going to work every time because I, ultimately what i might have to do is come in here and just select the green which you know for as small as this happens to be is not that bad and you know, it doesn't need to be exactly perfect, but you can make it as perfect as you want. So for me, that's probably pretty good. There's my green. I can see there's a few places here, but most of this is going to either fall within the tree or, you know, end up falling into the, the background. I'm just not going to be able to see it all that. So I'm going to invert that selection again, make my mask. And, you know, I 
that's that's good. I, I'm pretty happy with this. Again, there's some pieces in here that's eh. I could do better, and I probably would if I were actually submitting this image. But this is pretty good. You'll also notice that we probably do end up wanting want to get rid of our, our water because the idea is that I'm going to replace my sky at this point. And, you know, I want to make sure my water's there, but we can, while we can get it out, we can just go ahead and make sure we keep the water here, which is what we want. And not only the water, maybe the mountains as well. So at this point, all we need is our sky. So I would typically for something like this, leave a link in the description to where you could get some nice skies. But Honestly, because we're working with 2D, it's a bit different. And by 2D specifically, I mean flat, not 360. So I typically would go to HDRI Haven or something like that to get a 360 sky, which those are really nice. But because this is a flat image, you can literally just go to Google and search, you know, HD sky or something like that. Find a good one and then dump it in. So I did that already. So we've got one. And so I can go to file and we'll just place linked. That's fine. And here's my sky. And it'll come in just like that. Obviously, this is not what we want, but you'll notice immediately. I'm going to move this behind our rendering layer, and boom, we're, we're very close. Obviously, not there yet, but I can start to resize it. I'll press Control T, and I can resize this. So I want to probably move this up more towards the horizon line, something like this. This ends up being more of a sunset, you know, dusk type of picture. And I want to make sure I just make sure I include. Obviously, I fill the whole image, but really, that looks pretty good. And by good, I just mean I need it placed in the right place. We, we want to get an idea of what it's going to look like. Okay, like I'm pretty happy with this. Okay, cool. So let, let's go ahead and finish that. So there we go. That looks pretty good. So what I want to do now is, so we have the sky and then we're happy with it, but we want to make sure that we get our building and everything over here, including the the mountains, even the mountains, the sky, everything but the sky, and basically get all of that over here. So how do we do that? You know, what's the best way to do that? Because I mean, I can't just if I copy this over, then I'm stuck with you know the exact same thing. Well, in fact, what we want to do is copy it over. So in the future, you don't need to open this necessarily in two different. Uh, two different Photoshop files. It's just going to end up being one. So, but because I have it in two, I can come down here to the layer, right click this, and I can say duplicate layer. And so I want to make sure that I duplicate this layer on my other image. So like literally I am duplicating this layer and putting that layer in my other Photoshop file. So I hit OK. And we'll come over here and see there, you know, it's there. It's actually on top of my sky. So where do we want this to end up? Um, at this point, we do want this to end up being essentially in front of everything, you know, because we want to see it, but we, we don't want to see the sky. So really, what are we doing? <laughs> there's, there's one final step. And actually, we're, we don't even necessarily need our green background. So we can literally hide the green layer and we can see our actual rendering, but we don't have the sky. So the, the, with the one last layer that we need, or the one last step that we have is basically taking this mask which I can move this up because this mask layer, this mask layer is we just all we want is the exact same mask layer, but on our rendered image. And we use the green screen to get the mask. So we're we essentially don't need this green image anymore. So what I'm gonna do is literally hold control and then left click my layer one mask. And what that is going to do is give me that selection so then I can apply that mask to my rendered image. And so whenever I choose to mask, I can see, look at that. That, I mean, it's pretty close to what I want. I mean, I can play, I can go back and I can play with the sun angle, this or that. But I mean, all in all, that's pretty good. As like literally replacing this guy, you'll notice that we do not have the mountains because we did not take the mountains into account when we had the green. And so what we can do at this point is make sure that we work with our mask layer. And we can do that by actually disabling the layer. And I want to now just select where they are, like literally select around them. So I have, I, I hit F or I hit L, which is my polygon lasso. And I just want to select, just roughly select. I'm not trying to be completely precise, at, at least in this video. 
but I want to select around these mountains because whenever I'm done, I'll have the selection and I can end up adding the selection to my mask. And once I add it to the mask, it will then show up. And by add, I mean, you know, add or subtract, whatever it might be to the mask so we can see what we want to see. In this case, because we want to see the mountains, I'll, I want to make sure I select the mountains and we need to bring them back into the scene. So this was, you know, of course not a huge deal, and I'm not being completely precise, but what I would say is good enough. And so at this point, I have selected all of my mountains, and I don't care about the rest of the selection because this is, I just need to finish the sketch, what I need to add. And that's because I'm currently within the area that I want to see. And so with that selected, I have my mask, and you'll, like, this only works because I'm masking out the sky and not the grass. So if I were masking out the grass and not the sky, I would have finished the sketch on like above. So now what I need to do is make sure I have the mask selected. I can choose B and you'll see B is just brush. And I only have two options, which is black or white. Black being it's going to end up removing that from my image as in masking it out and then white leaving it there. And so with, with the white, I can see, oh, I want to actually leave the mountains there so I can just literally brush them back in. I mean, come on, look at that. Look how easy that was. And you'll notice, of course, it wasn't exactly perfect, but for what I'm trying to do here, this is pretty good. So I would say I am happy with this, but the last thing I would probably do is attempt at getting some more light balance within the scene, particularly because I... I took like a late, you know, like a middle afternoon shot and I put in a, a darker sky. So it would behoove, behoove you to like match the time of day with the sky. And so you have less legwork on this end of things. But, you know, with this rendered layer selected, I can come over to my adjustments and then just maybe play with the curves or the brightness and contrast. And it's really just as simple as making this look correct. You know, and what I'm probably going to want to do is just reduce some of the light and you know pull this down a bit and it, it's it's looking pretty close so there's a whole lot that we could do at this point to make this look even more beautiful than we want it to but you know i will say this it does look pretty good for what it is like i'm pretty happy with the way this looks because it's good you know we replaced this guy that's what our goal was so Really, that's going to do it. What, what we ended up going through is making that sphere, literally creating a green screen background. And after that, exporting our two images, one that was with the green screen and the other one that we really made look like we wanted to. I Again, I would probably get the settings to look more like you want to match the sky. And then we came into Photoshop, masked out the background using the green screen. We just selected it all. And we're able to easily mask that out and replace that with the sky. And duplicated the layer, brought the other render in, but I could have done the exact same thing that I did before and just literally linked the image in, which is probably what I would have done. Because if I linked it in, I could literally go back to Twin Motion, update that rendering, assuming I didn't move the camera, but update the rendering as far as like where the shadows are, this or that, and then just update the image. And because it's linked, it would update in Photoshop. Could have done that too. I'd probably recommend that you do that. But you know, all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. There's some things that I can change if I wanted to, if I, and I would if it were a more formal and if I were actually submitting this, but it's a rendering. It looks good. We got a custom sky in there. It looks a lot better in some cases. It can look a lot better than the default twin motion sky, but yeah, that will do it for this video. I sure hope you did learn something. If you did, please demolish that like button because it does tell me that you did learn something or you might've just liked the video. So I have lots of future videos coming out, more on this subject, Twin Motion and others, Revit, you name it. Come back. Hope to see you again. See you in the next video. Have a wonderful day. Again, thank you for watching.